Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Recently, we released our Core i9 9900K review and cited thermals as being a pretty major issue for the new 8-core CPU. In fact, thermals were so bad, I was worried I'd done something wrong, but prior to release, fellow Aussie YouTubers uh, Brian from Tech Air City and Jared of Jared's Tech confirmed the horrendous thermal results. Then about 20 minutes before the NDA lifted, overclocking God de Bauer confirmed what we'd all found. Once all the reviews were live, I then jumped around all over the place, checked out what other media outlets were reporting, and for the most part, it looked pretty hot. There were, however, a few outliers. OC3D TV being one, they reported shockingly low operating temperatures of just 65 degrees, and then went overclocked just 79 degrees. Both were lower than my stock temperature. This didn't make sense until I dug into the system specs and discovered the issue. An issue I actually touched on in my own review, though not in relation to power consumption and thermals. Anyway, I had no intention of addressing the results, despite a few people requesting that we uh, did in the comments section and on various social media platforms that we're on. I went up the review police, and chances are they're being harassed by quite a few viewers, so they'll probably look into themselves. So that was that. But then the following day, our Discord chat blew up. Quite a few members who subscribe to Floatplane, that's the Linus Tech Tips early access platform, were ranting about their 9900K review. A long story short, Linus was claiming that the peak load temperature was just 58 degrees for the 9900K, and the total system consumption was just 139 watts. Now, both these figures are absurdly low, and despite countless viewers pointing that out, Linus has stamped his foot down and declares that he stands by them. Unfortunately, though, they do fail the common sense test uh, more than once, and despite being technically correct, uh, this should have set off alarm bells. I know that statement contradicts itself, but bear with me. <laughs> His own results show the 8-core 9900K running cooler and consuming less power than the 6-core 8700K. The 8-core model, of course, packs 33% more cores and is also clocked higher, and it still uses the same 14 nanometer process. So it should be impossible for the 9900K to use the same amount of power as the 8700K, let alone less. So at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, Linus got it wrong. He or his team messed up. Well, no, not exactly. Linus addressed viewer concerns in a pinned comment saying the following. The performance numbers we got were double checked against Intel's engineers and they are in line. This suggests that our thermal tests are indicative of stock performance with motherboard vendor optimizations disabled. The crazy part being that this is actually correct. All their performance numbers are technically correct. We could argue that ours are more correct, but technically neither Harbor Unbox nor Linus Tech Tips got it wrong, despite publishing vastly different numbers. Uh, Intel's hell-bent on declaring the 9900K as a 95 watt part, which is ridiculous, and it's the reason why our results differed uh, so much to those published by Linus Tech Tips. We used two motherboards to validate the 9900K numbers, the MSI Z390 Godlike and the ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate. Both boards are more than capable of extracting every last bit of performance from the 8-core processor. Linus, like OC3D TV, used a motherboard packing a measly 4-phase VRM, a VRM that's not nearly capable enough of getting the most out of the 9900K, but I should note does officially support the 8-core processor, so there is no reason why they can't test with such a motherboard. In our day one review, we compared the Z390 Godlike to a Z370 board using a four-phase VRM, the same design used by most entry-level Z390 boards, and this is the reason why we used it. And when doing so, we saw very heavy VRM throttling, which reduced the clock speed and therefore performance. What we didn't show was thermal and power consumption numbers when throttling. So I've gone back and retested the MSI Z370 PC Pro. Now, this isn't the same board used by either Linus Tech Tips or OC3D TV, but it does pack a four phase VRM and crucially has the same 95 watt uh, limit. I've also dumped my open loop cooling setup with the 360 millimeter radiator in favor of the Corsair H100i Pro. Previously, we saw a stock operating temperature of 85 degrees with the H100i, but now with the 95 watt limit in place, the temperature only peaked at 60 degrees before dropping down and holding steady at 55 degrees, right in the range of the 58 degrees Linus reports. 
power consumption also dropped from 249 watts right down to 160 watts. A little more than what Linus reported, but then we are using a different board, memory, power supply, and so on. Point is, that's a 36% reduction in power consumption. Now, you might think, well, that's great. The four-phase board allowed the 9900K to run much cooler and consume less power. Sounds like a win to me. However, it's only doing this because it's limiting the 9900K's clock speed. Whereas in our review, it maintained an all-core clock speed of 4.7 GHz. With the 95 watt limit in place, it ran all cores at just 4.2 GHz. Now, Intel will be quick to point out that the base clock is 3.6 GHz, so we're still within spec. But with the limits removed, the 9900K does target a x 47 clock multiplier for a 4.7 GHz operating frequency. Linus also reported the 9900K is having issues with DirectX 12 in games, which is odd as we saw no such issue, and well, that would just be odd in general. However, Linus was led to believe this as the DirectX 12 API better utilizes the 9900K's eight cores, placing it under more load and therefore forcing the clock speed down. This is why the 8700K was slower than the 9900K using DirectX 11, but faster using DirectX 12. They witnessed this in Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. If you recall, I mentioned in my day one review that the four phase board would allow the 9900K to hit 1900 points on the first Cinebench run. And guess what? Linus reported 1911 points, and that's 7% lower than our score. However, if you run the test at least three more times back to back, the score will drop down to just under 1800 points, or at least that's what we saw, and that's a 13% decrease. And that makes sense as the 9900K is running at least 11% slower in terms of frequency. So, mystery solved, and technically the Linus Tech Tips numbers are correct, as the Intel spec is very broad now. So, we're not calling Linus out, we're not saying they did anything wrong, as technically, they didn't. Uh, for those of you wondering, the 9900K, in order for it to maintain 4.7 GHz, the all-core frequency, the 95 watt limit needs to be raised to 150 watts, and that's a 58% increase. So that means boards are spec to only handle 95 watts are running massively out of spec in order to get the most out of the 8-core processor. It also means if you're going to run the 9900K at the maximum spec like we did, then you are going to need a serious cooler and even then expect things to get pretty hot. Anyway, hope that clears things up and explains why our results were so different to those who used boards with the 95 watt limit in place. And with that, I am going to end this one. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more content just like this. And if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our Discord chat where you can harass us about our review and other reviews and stuff like that. And you can also join, uh, you can get access to our monthly live stream where we're going to do one of those this Thursday. So coming up very shortly on the channel, that'll be a lot of fun. Anyway, I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.